Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to lecture number 35 of the course on statistics and probability. Students, you will recall that in the last lecture, I discussed with you various methods of point estimation. You will recall the method of moments, the method of least squares and the very important method of maximum likelihood. After a brief discussion of these methods, students, we started the other very important area of estimation and that is interval estimation. You will recall that towards the end of the last lecture, I derived for you the 95% confidence interval for mu. Aapko yaad hai na ke maine aap se kaha tha ke agar che hum generally is course mein derivations nahi karenge lekin ye ek derivation mein aap ko doon ki ta ke aap ye realize kar sake ke ye jo ultimately in uh, limits hume milti hai the lower and the upper limit of the confidence interval in ki ek logical uh, argument hai jiske tehet wo hume milti hai. Otherwise, if I would have just given you the formula, uh, it would not have made much sense to you. Students, you will recall that the derivation led us to the formula x bar plus minus 1.96 sigma over square root of n. Plus and minus meaning that if you minus, you obtain the lower limit and if you plus, you obtain the upper limit. Or aapko ye bhi yaad hoga ke maine kaha tha ke kai situations mein, real life situations mein, sigma, the standard deviation of the population is not known. And then what do we do? The best we can do is to estimate sigma. Kyunke estimate to hum kar hi sakte hain. Or hum s compute kar lenge. And if we apply the formula, summation x minus x bar whole square over n minus 1, then of course, we are talking about small s square, which is an unbiased estimator of sigma square. And hence, our formula for the confidence interval now becomes x bar plus minus 1.96 s over square root of n. Let us apply this now to an example. As you now see on the screen, consider a car assembly plant employing something over 25,000 men. In planning its future labor requirements, the management wants an estimate of the number of days lost per man each year due to illness or absenteeism. A random sample of 500 employment records shows the following situation. Now we have two columns. The first is number of days lost and we have the values none, one or two, three or four, five or six, seven or eight, nine to twelve and thirteen to twenty. And the second column is of the number of employees who had that many absences. 48 persons were not absent even once, 43 were absent either once or twice and 90 either three times or four times. And in this way we have all the figures in the second column which add to 500 the sample size that we drew. Construct a 95% confidence interval for the mean number of days lost per man each year due to illness or absenteeism. Students, aapne dekha ke hamare paas ek frequency distribution available thi, lekin importantly is baat ko zehen rakhiye that this frequency distribution pertain to the sample that we have drawn. Vaise to, jaise aapne dekha, ke 25,000 se bhi zyada employees hain us company ke, lekin 
sample jo hai that is of only 500 employees aur wo jo records hain they pertain to just 500 people lekin kyunki 500 bhi khasa bada figure hai isliye wo jo figures hain absences ke they have been compiled into a frequency distribution hamara jo aim hai wo ye hai ki hum sirf is sample ke liye nahi janna chahte ki what is the mean number of absences balki we would like to draw an inference for the whole population aur agar hum ye conference interval construct karenge to hum ek estimate de sakenge in the form of an interval jiske sath hum ek level of confidence bhi attach kar sakenge ke itne confidence ke sath goya hum ye baat keh sakte hain so how do we uh, tackle the situation फार्मूला तो वही है जो मैं कई मरतबा रिपीट कर चुकी हूँ और डिराइव कर चुके हैं हम एक्स बार प्लस माइनस वन पॉइंट नाइन सिक्स एस ओवर स्क्वायर रूट ऑफ एन तो साफ जाहिर है स्टूडेंट्स कि सबसे पहले हमें एक्स बार और एस ही कंप्यूट करना है ना सो एज यू नाउ सी ऑन द स्क्रीन द कॉम्प्यूटेशन विच आर एग्जैक्टली द सेम एज वी हैव लर्न अर्लियर लीड टू एक्स बार इक्वल टू 5.38 days and s equal to 3.53 days substituting these values in the formula our 95% confidence interval for mu comes out to be 5.38 minus 1.96 into 3.53 over the square root of 500 this is the lower limit and for the upper limit we have exactly the same numbers the only difference being that the minus sign is replaced by the plus sign obviously we have put the number 500 in the square root sign because the sample size in this particular problem is 500 and students upon solving the two expressions we obtain the lower limit as 5.07 days and the upper limit as 5.69 days students um aaiye is result ko interpret karne ki ek martaba phir koshish karte hain dekhiye level of confidence tha 95% hum ye keh rahe hain ki agar hum is qisam ke बहुत से कॉन्फिडेंस इंटरवल्स कंस्ट्रक्ट करते बेस्ड ऑन द डिफरेंट सैम्पल्स दैट वी कुड हैव ड्रॉन फ्रॉम दिस पॉपुलेशन तो 95 परसेंट ऑफ दीज इंटरवल्स वुड हैव कंटेन द ट्रू पैरामीटर वैल्यू यानी जो ट्रू मीन नंबर ऑफ एबसेंस है ना वो इनमें से पचानवे फीसद में लाए करना था लेकिन ऑफकोर्स एक रियल लाइफ सिचुएशन में तो हम एक ही ड्रॉ करेंगे और ये जो हमने ड्रॉ किया उसकी बेसिस पे जो इंटरवल बना दैट इज 5.07 डेज टू 5.69 डेज ये क्या ये रेंज किस चीज़ को रिप्रेजेंट कर रही है कि हम ये कह रहे हैं कि मीन नंबर ऑफ एबसेंसेस जो है ना दैट मे बी लाइंग इन दिस रेंज एंड वी आर सेइंग दिस ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ दैट प्रोसीजर इन विच द लेवल ऑफ कॉन्फिडेंस इज नाइन्टी बात जरा लंबी हो गई लेकिन बात अहम है एक बड़ा ही इंटरेस्टिंग पॉइंट और इम्पॉर्टेंट पॉइंट मैं आपको राइट नाउ कन्वे कर देना चाहती हूँ देखिए जो डेरिवेशन लास्ट टाइम की थी उसके तहत द इक्वेजन दैट वी ऑप्टेन एट द एंड वॉज दैट द प्रॉबिलिटी इज जीरो पॉइंट नाइन फाइव दैट इज नाइन्टी फाइव परसेंट दैट x bar minus 1.96 sigma over square root of n is less than equal to mu is less than equal to x bar plus 1.96 sigma over square root of n yahan ye statement bilkul sahi hai jab tak ke x bar ki value specify nahi hoti tab tak ye statement sahi hai ke is baat ki probability 95% hai ke ye jo interval hai that will contain mu but students the moment you have actually drawn a sample actually found an x bar and actually computed uh, limits the way we have just done 
اب اگر میں اس قسم کی سٹیٹمنٹ دوں it is incorrect اگر میں یہ سٹیٹمنٹ دوں اس اگزامپل میں that the probability is 0.95 that 5.07 is less than or equal to mu is less than or equal to 5.69 یعنی mu lies in this range اس بات کا امکان پچانوے فیصد ہے mathematically speaking it is wrong دیکھئے mu جو true population mean ہے نا اس کی کوئی ایک پٹیکلر ویلیو ہے یا وہ ویلیو اس انٹرول کے اندر ہے اور یا وہ ویلیو اس انٹرول کے باہر ہے if it is inside this interval then we should say that the probability of it being in this interval is cent percent that is one یعنی مثال کے طور پہ اگر آپ فرض کیجئے that the true mean is 5.25 تو 5.25 تو ہمیشہ ہمیشہ اور ہمیشہ 5.07 اور 5.69 کے درمیان ہی لائے کرے گا نا This is cent percent probability So in this case we should say that the probability of this happening is 1 اور اگر فرض کیجئے that the actual true value of mu is 6.25 تو 6.25 تو کبھی کبھی بھی 5.07 اور 5.69 کے درمیان لائے نہیں کر سکتا نا so the probability of 6.25 lying in that range is zero it is neither one and nor is it 0.95 آپ نے دیکھا کہ یہ ایک بہت لمبی چوری ڈسکرشن میں نے ایک mathematical intricacy کے اوپر کر دی but students this is vitally important آپ یہ سٹیٹمنٹ نہ کبھی دیں that the probability that mu is between 5 point something and 6 point something or whatever کہ یہ نمبر ہے اگر اور اس کے بیچ میں mu لائے کر رہا ہے اور آپ کہیں کہ اس بات کی probability 0.95 ہے once the sample has been drawn and it has materialized and you have a proper some actual numerical value for x bar and you have correspondingly some actual numerical lower and upper limits uske baad either that interval contains mu or it does not contain mu either the probability of mu lying in that interval is one or it is zero to phir sawal ye ki sab kuch hum kar kya rahe main phir repeat karti hu students ke humne ye kiya ke hamara procedure is qisam ka hai that if we had done this uh, this process again and again and again then 95 percent of our intervals of this type would have contained mu to is baat pe hum khush hain is baat pe hum khush hain ki hamara interval hamara ye process is type ka hai aur isi basis pe students numerous intervals are constructed not only for mu but also for p the proportion of successes in a binomial population for sigma square the variance of any particular population and for other quantities and in this course as we go along you will find that i will be constructing intervals for you of this type for mu mu 1 minus mu 2 p p 1 minus p 2 and later also for sigma square and also students for sigma 1 square over sigma 2 square yani do alag alag population hai unke alag alag variances and we are interested ke un variances ka aap is mein kya relation hai اس کو estimate کرنا چاہتے ہیں so this is a detailed area a vast area but یہ جو کچھ میں نے ابھی پچھلے دس منٹ کے دوران کہا that is the crux of the matter اور اسی لیے میں نے اس کو اتنی detail میں explain کیا کیونکہ from my point of view it's absolutely useless to apply formulas without understanding the concept ہمیشہ کوشش کیجئے 
کہ آپ پہلے اس کی اس کی روح تک پہنچے اور اس کے بعد اس کو ریئل لائف سچویشنز میں اپروپریٹلی اپلائی کریں آل رائٹ ناؤ دیٹ وی ہیو ہیڈ ڈیٹیل ڈسکشن ریگارڈنگ دا کور کانسیپٹ انوالو اسٹوڈنٹس لیٹ می ناؤ برنگ یور اٹینشن ٹو اندر امپورٹنٹ پوائنٹ یہ جو میں نے آپ کے ساتھ ساری ڈسکشن پہلے بھی کی اور آج بھی کی دس واز پٹیننگ ٹو نائنٹی فائیو پرسینٹ کانفیڈنس دس از دی جنرلی یوزڈ لیول آف کانفیڈنس اکثر اوقات ہم یہی یوز کرتے ہیں بٹ دس از ناٹ دی اونلی ون دیٹ وی کین یوز وی کین بی نائنٹی نائن پرسینٹ کانفیڈنٹ وی ووڈ لائک ٹو بی مور کانفیڈنٹ وائی نائنٹی فائیو اینڈ ان سم سچویشنز وی مائٹ فائنڈ دیٹ وی مائٹ بی ہیپی ود ایون اونلی نائنٹی پرسینٹ کانفیڈنس تو اس سلسلے میں اٹ مینس دیٹ دیر شوڈ بی اے جنرل فارمولا جس میں یہ سارے لیولز آف کانفیڈنس اکاموڈیٹ ہو جائیں اینڈ فار دیٹ لیٹ از ناؤ لک لک ایٹ دا سلائڈ دیٹ وی ہیو ان جنرل دا لوور اینڈ اپر لمٹس آف دا کانفیڈنس انٹرول فار میو آر گیون بائی ایکس بار پلس مائنس زیڈ الفا بائی ٹو ایس اوور اسکوائر روٹ آف این ویئر دا ویلو آف زیڈ الفا بائی ٹو ڈپینڈس آن ہاؤ مچ کانفیڈنس وی وانٹ ٹو ہیو ان آور انٹرول ایسٹیمیٹ اب سوال یہ پیدا ہوتا ہے کہ زیڈ الفا بائی ٹو سے ہماری کیا مراد ہے اف یو ہیو لک ایٹ دا ڈائگرام دیٹ از ناؤ ان فرنٹ آف یو اسٹوڈنٹس یو ول فائنڈ دیٹ دا ٹو پوائنٹس دیٹ وی ہیو ٹوورڈس دا ٹیلز آف آور اسٹینڈرڈ نارمل ڈسٹریبیوشن دے آر بینگ کالڈ زیڈ الفا بائی ٹو دا ون آن دا رائٹ اینڈ مائنس زیڈ الفا بائی ٹو دا ون آن دا لیفٹ پہلے رائٹ سائڈ والے پوائنٹ پر کانسنٹریٹ کیجیے دس از زیڈ الفا بائی ٹو اینڈ اسٹوڈنٹس دا سبسکرپٹ الفا بائی ٹو implies that the area to the right of this particular point is alpha by 2. First ki jiye, humne z alpha yaha pe likha hota, to uska matlab ye hota, ke is point ke right side pe jo area hai, that is equal to alpha. Achha, ab sawaal ye hai ke ye, humne ye jo quantities likhi hui hai, 1 minus alpha, alpha by 2, ye inka kya matlab hai? اس سلسلے میں دا فرسٹ تھنگ ٹو انڈرسٹینڈ از دیٹ دی ایریا ان دا مڈل آف دا ڈائگرام ریپرزینٹس دا لیول آف کانفیڈنس سو اف دا لیول آف کانفیڈنس از نائنٹی فائیو پرسینٹ اٹ مینس دیٹ ون مائنس الفا از ایکول ٹو زیرو پوائنٹ نائن فائیو ویچ ان ٹرن مینس دیٹ الفا از ایکول ٹو زیرو پوائنٹ زیرو فائیو ناؤ when i divide alpha by 2 in other words if i divide 0.05 by 2 obviously i will get 0.025 that is 2.5% and this is exactly the area that we would like to have in the right tail as well as the left tail of the distribution in other words the area on the right as well as on the left is 0.025 and the one in the middle equal to 0.95 so that when we add all these areas we get one the total area under the normal distribution generally speaking i repeat in the middle we will have one minus alpha which will denote the level of confidence and on the right side as well as on the left side we will have alpha by 2 ye jo z alpha by 2 hai students یہ زیڈ کی ویلیو ہمیں ایریا ٹیبل سے ملے گی جیسا کہ ہم نے اس سے پہلے اس وقت بھی دیکھا تھا جب ہم نارمل ڈسٹریبیوشن اسٹڈی کر رہے تھے ان اٹس اون رائٹ جب بھی آپ کوئی پرابلم نارمل ڈسٹریبیوشن کا سالو کریں گے تو زیڈ ویلیو تو آپ کو ایریا ٹیبل ہی سے ملے گی نا ناؤ ایز یو سی آن دا نیکسٹ سلائڈ اف 1 minus alpha is equal to 0.95 then the area table gives us the z value as 1.96 but if the level of confidence is 99% then 
z alpha by 2 comes out to be 2.575 which can be rounded to say 2.58. Also, if the level of confidence is 90 percent, then z alpha by 2 comes out to be 1.645. Students, I am sure that uh, you should have no problem in finding these values because you have already quite a bit of practice, I am sure, by now of how to consult the area table of the standard normal distribution. Ab ye jo teen char values maine aapke saath share ki, actually these, you know, if you just uh, memorize them, to phir aapko bar bar area table dekhne ki zarurat bhi nahi padti. Uh, jaise maine pehle kaha, 95% confidence to sabse zyada commonly used level of confidence hai hi, aur iske liye 1.96 value hume area table se milti hai. So that can be memorized very easily. और जो बाकी दो बताएं वो भी काफी आसानी से याद हो जाती हैं। So you do not have to look at the area table again and again and again. 1.645 is the value when we have 90% confidence and 2.58 is the value which we will have if we want to have a very high level of confidence and that is 99%. अगला पॉइंट ये है कि जो फॉर्मूला अब एक जनरल हमने डेवलप कर लिया x बार प्लस माइनस z अल्फा बाय 2 s ओवर स्क्वायर रूट ऑफ n उसमें आपने देखा कि मैंने s कहा तो इसका यही मतलब है ना कि वी आर एस्यूमिंग दैट सिग्मा द वे द स्टैंडर्ड डिविएशन ऑफ द पॉपुलेशन इज अननोन एंड सो वी हैव टू रिप्लेस इट बाय s ये फॉर्मूला जो है, this is valid for large n और वो central limit theorem भी आपको मैं दोबारा से remind कराऊं कि अगर आपका sample size large हो, तो फिर आपकी sampling distribution जो है that has mean equal to mu and standard deviation equal to sigma over square root of n उसी से हमारा ये interval derive हुआ था और उसमें अब finally हमने सिग्मा की जगह पे एस रखा है। लार्ज एन जो है उसकी जो प्रैक्टिकल यानी प्रैक्टिकली कितना लार्ज हो तो हम करें उसके लिए स्टूडेंट्स द रूल ऑफ थंब इज दैट इफ योर एन इज ग्रेटर देन और इक्वल टू थर्टी देन यू कैन अप्लाई दिस फॉर्मूला क्वाइट एडिक्वेटली सो आपने देखा कि इन रियलिटी वैसे तो it should have been very large, but we find that even if it is only 30, um, it is quite adequate. So, as you now see on the slide, for large n, that is n greater than or equal to 30, a sample of this size drawn from an infinite population, the confidence interval for mu is given by x bar plus minus z alpha by 2 into s over square root of n and s is equal to the square root of sigma x minus x bar whole square over n minus 1. Let us now apply this concept to a few more examples. The Punjab Highway Department is studying the traffic pattern on the GT road near Lahore. As part of the study, the department needs to estimate the average number of vehicles that pass the Ravi Bridge each day. A random sample of 64 days gives x bar equal to 5410 and s is equal to 680. Find the 90% confidence interval estimate for mu, the average number of vehicles that pass the Ravi bridge per day. Students, सबसे पहले देखते हैं कि हमारे पास क्या-क्या information available है. आपने देखा कि sample size is 64 और अभी जो मैंने आपको rule of thumb दिया, उसके तहत तो of course it is greater than 30. And so we can apply this formula that uh, I have been discussing with you. 
اگلی بات یہ کہ ایکس بار اویلیبل ہے کہ وہ جو چونسٹھ دنوں کا ہم نے ڈیٹا لیا یعنی ریکارڈ تو رکھا جاتا ہے نا ہر روز کہ آج کتنے ویہیکلز گزرے یہاں سے آپ کو پتہ ہے کہ ٹول ٹیکس وغیرہ بھی لیا جاتا ہے تو ظاہر ہے کہ ایک ریکارڈ منٹین ہوتا ہے تو چونسٹھ دنوں کا جو ریکارڈ ہے اس میں we found that x bar is equal to 5410 یعنی on the average in those 64 days 5410 vehicles were passing the Ravi bridge each day on the average اسی طرح standard deviation یعنی a measure of variation کیونکہ ہر روز تو 5410 نہیں گزریں گی نا کسی دن زیادہ کسی دن کم so that variation the measure is s and as you noticed that is equal to 680 so applying these values in the formula we obtain 5410 plus minus z alpha by 2 680 divided by the square root of 64 now since the level of confidence that we want to have is 90% hence z alpha by 2 is equal to 1.645 and substituting this value we obtain 5410 plus minus 1.645 into 680 divided by 8 and solving this expression the lower limit of our confidence interval is 5270.2 and the upper limit is 5549.8. Rounding these numbers to the nearest whole number, we obtain 5270 to 5550. This means that on the basis of 90% level of confidence, we are saying that the average number of vehicles that pass the Ravi bridge each day, this average number lies somewhere between 5270 and 5550. Yahan pe ek bada important point students note kare. Aisa na ho ke aap me se kuch log ye samaj rahe ho ke hum 90% confidence ke saath ye keh rahe hain that the number of vehicles that passes this bridge every day, this number uh, lies somewhere between 5270 and 5550. No, this is very important. Many ye kaha hai ke mu, the mean number of vehicles lies in this range. Many ye nahi kaha ke minimum number of vehicles that can pass is 5270. Mumkin hai ke koi aisa din ho ke jis din sirf 4000 gaadiyan guzri ho. Isi tarah mumkin hai ke koi aisa din ho jis din saadhe 6000 gaadiyan guzar jayen. Baat ho rahi hai mu ki. And this is a vitally important point. Let us now have a look at another example. Suppose a car rental firm wants to estimate the average number of kilometers traveled per day by each of its cars rented in a particular city. A random sample of 110 cars rented in this city reveals that the mean travel distance per day is 85.5 kilometers with a standard deviation of 19.3 kilometers. Compute a 99% confidence interval to estimate mu. Now, to solve this problem, the first thing to note is that n is equal to 110, much larger than 30, and x bar is equal to 85.5, s equal to 19.3. So, Applying these values in the formula, we obtain 85.5 minus z alpha by 2 into 19.3 over square root of 110 for the lower limit and for the upper limit, 
the minus sign is replaced by the plus sign. Now, since we wish to have 99 percent confidence, therefore, z alpha by 2 is equal to 2.575 and substituting this value, our limits come out to be 80.8 and 90.2. So, we are saying with a very high level of confidence that is 99 percent that the mean distance travel distance that this mean value lies somewhere between 80.8 .8 or 81 if we round it 81 kilometers and 90.2 that is 90 kilometers. So, is tarikhe se students aapne dekha ke hum ek range of values dete hain aur hum kehte hain ke humara parameter is range ke andar lie karta hai ye baat hum ek certain level of confidence ke saath kehte hain. Now, I would like to draw your attention to another very interesting and important way of interpreting a confidence interval. As you now see on the screen, because of the fact that sigma x bar is equal to sigma over square root of n, our confidence interval can be conveniently written as x bar plus minus z alpha by 2 into sigma x bar, where sigma x bar of course represents the standard error of x bar. The confidence interval for mu can therefore be defined as x bar plus minus a certain number of standard errors of x bar. In other words, we can say that our confidence interval is a point estimate plus minus a few times the standard error of that estimate. Now, the question arises how many times and the answer is that this thing depends on the level of confidence that we wish to have. In the case of 99 percent confidence, in order to estimate mu, our z alpha by 2 is equal to 2.58 which is approximately equal to 2.5 or in other words 2 and a half. So, we can define our confidence interval as x bar plus minus 2 and a half times standard error of x bar. Similarly, in the case of 95 percent confidence, z alpha by 2 is equal to 1.96 which is approximately equal to 2. So, in this case we can define our confidence interval as x bar plus minus 2 times the standard error of x bar and so on and so forth. So, aapne dekha ke is tarah se agar hum interpret kare to actually it is very very simple. हम सिर्फ ये कह रहे हैं कि सबसे पहले पॉइंट एस्टीमेट कंप्यूट कीजिए जो इस केस में x बार है और उसके बाद उसका स्टैंडर्ड एरर कंप्यूट कर लीजिए एंड देन x बार प्लस माइनस अ सर्टेन नंबर ऑफ स्टैंडर्ड एरर्स अगर 99% कॉन्फिडेंस चाहिए तो ढाई स्टैंडर्ड एरर ऐड और सबट्रैक्ट कर लीजिए और अगर 95% कॉन्फिडेंस लेवल चाहिए तो दो स्टैंडर्ड एरर्स add or subtract kar lije. Agar aap isko visualize kare, to it is very simple. X bar, us mein se agar aap minus karenge, you get the lower limit and agar aap plus karenge, you get the upper limit and you get the two limits of your confidence interval. So, this is an important and very interesting way of interpreting and remembering the concept of a confidence interval. Or students, ab main aapki tawajjo ek bahut hi important point ki taraf dilana chahti hu. Aap kahenge aaj to sabhi cheeze bahut zyada important hai. Well, let it be so. Students, baat hi hai ki aapne dekha ki level of confidence is uh, variable. Aap chahe to 90 feesat confidence pe hi um, you can be quite happy. But Obviously, it is intuitively understandable that the higher 
the level of confidence, the better it is. I mean, why should it be 90 percent? Why not 99 percent or even 99.99 percent? The problem is that as you raise the level of confidence, given any particular sample of a particular size, students, your confidence interval widens. Abhi abhi aapne dekha tha ke maine kaha ke agar 95% confidence hai, to 1.96 ya 2 standard errors aap piche jayenge, 2 standard errors aage aayenge, so you will get a certain interval. But when you increased the level of confidence to 99%, आपको याद है ना 2.58 यानी ढाई ढाई स्टैंडर्ड एरर्स पीछे जा रहे हैं और ढाई स्टैंडर्ड एरर्स आगे जा रहे हैं एंड इट इज अ वाइडर इंटरवल सो दिस इज द प्रॉब्लम कि अगर आप लेवल ऑफ कॉन्फिडेंस को रेज करते हैं तो आपका इंटरवल वाइडन हो जाता है तो आप कहेंगे कि प्रॉब्लम क्या है होने दें नो दैट्स नॉट वेरी वंडरफुल स्टूडेंट्स इसलिए कि the narrower the interval, the better. After all, aap zara ghor kijiye, aap mein ek statement dene lagi hoon, zara sochiye. If I say that I am 99.999999% confident that the mean height of the adult males in this particular city, this mean height lies somewhere between 4 feet and um, 12 feet. Will it make any sense? Yani itna wide interval maine diya aur mujhe koi keh nahi sakta ki main galat keh rahi hu. Isliye ke wo mean height waqai 4 feet or 12 feet ke darmiyan hi kahi hogi. And I'm saying it with 99.999% level of confidence. It doesn't make much sense. The narrower your interval, the better. For example, if I say that I am this much confident that the mean height of these males lies somewhere between um, 5 feet 6 inches and 5 feet 7 inches. Students, aapne dekha? Immediately, aapka zehen jo hai, ye isko accept karta hai as, a, as something to be accepted and to be happy about. Dekhiye kis qadar narrow interval maine aapko diya ki bhai 5 feet 6 inches or 5 feet 7 inches ke darmiyan mean height lie karti hai. Actually the narrower your interval the better and students what can be the ideal width of your interval? Will it not be zero? Ke bilkul hi koi uski width na ho and you are able to give just one figure then you are back to point estimation because point estimation to aap, to aap ek hi figure dete hai na? the x bar value itself that one lone answer that you have obtained that one single point that is an estimate of your parameter but as stated in the last lecture the problem with point estimation is that once you have drawn one particular sample and found this point estimate, you have no way of saying how close this particular value is to the true parameter value. How close is, is it or how far is it? Agar aap ek interval construct kar lete hain, to uske saath you are able to attach this level of confidence, yani that probability that we have been talking about earlier. Ab is sari discussion ka gist kya hai? Hum chahte ye hai ke interval narrow bhi ho aur level of confidence bhi high ho. But students as I just indicated, this is not possible for any given particular size in the, in because of this reason that as you increase your level of confidence, your interval widens. Iska ilaj ye hai ki aap sample size bada kar dein. Because if you look at the formula, it is x bar plus minus z alpha by 2 sigma over square root of n. Jab ye n 
उसके डिनोमिनेटर में आ रहा है तो इसका मतलब है कि अगर एन इंक्रीज करेगा तो वो पूरी जो चीज है विच इज बींग एडेड एंड सब्ट्रैक्टेड फ्रॉम योर एक्स बार दैट इंटायर एक्सप्रेशन विल बिकम स्मॉलर ऑब्वियसली एज यू इंक्रीज द थिंग इन द डिनोमिनेटर दैट होल थिंग बिकम स्मॉलर और अगर आप वो एक छोटी चीज एड और सब्ट्रैक्ट करेंगे फ्रॉम योर एक्स बार देन ऑब्वियसली यू आर अचीविंग अ नैरोअर इंटरवल द प्रॉब्लम इज दैट इन मेनी सिचुएशन यू कैनॉट अफोर्ड to increase the sample size beyond a certain value aapke itne resources nahi hote itne paise aapke paas available nahi hote budget ke point of view se ki jiski wajah se you are able to increase the sample size to as large a size that you might wish to have you may have time constraints the smaller your sample the less time you will need to collect the data and to analyze the data and so on and so forth so agar aap sample size nahi badha sakte then you have to strike a compromise between how high a level you wish to have and how wide uh, the interval you can tolerate all right students now that we have had a discussion regarding the confidence interval for mu let us proceed to the confidence interval for mu1 minus mu2 ab hum ye baat kar rahe hain ke we have two populations and we are interested in determining the difference between the means of the two populations is tarah ki situation kab arise karegi for example if there is a boys college and there is a girls college and we are talking about the marks of the students to n mumkin hai ki agar wo dono college compete karte hain to unke jo principals hain unhe interest ho is baat mein ke determine kiya jaye ki dono colleges ke jo marks hain unme kitna fark hai on the average how much is the difference between the marks obtained by the students of the boys college and the marks obtained by the students of the girls college to aaiye is concept ko is apply karte hain two different examples prior to which of course we first look at the formula for this particular interval as you now see on the screen the confidence interval for the difference between the means of two populations that is mu1 minus mu2 is given by x1 bar minus x2 bar plus minus z alpha by 2 into the square root of s1 square over n1 plus s2 square over n2 and this formula is valid when we are drawing large samples independently from two infinite populations this formula is being uh, presented in that situation when the population variances sigma 1 square and sigma 2 square are unknown as is generally the case and therefore we will replace them by their estimates s1 square and s2 square students अब इस कोर्स में एक डेरिवेशन तो मैं कर ही चुकी हूँ रिगार्डिंग कॉन्फ्रेंस इंटरवल्स लेकिन अब इस फॉर्मूले की डेरिवेशन मैं नहीं करना चाहूँगी बट आई वुड लाइक टू ड्रॉ योर अटेंशन टू द फैक्ट दैट द बेसिक पैटर्न इज एग्जैक्टली द सेम एज बिफोर इट इज द पॉइंट एस्टिमेट प्लस माइनस जेर एल्फा बाई टू इन टू द स्टैंडर्ड एर ऑफ दैट पर्टिकुलर पॉइंट एस्टिमेट इस सिचुएशन में जो पैरामीटर हम एस्टिमेट करना चाहते हैं या जो क्वांटिटी हम एस्टिमेट करना चाहते हैं दैट इज म्यू वन माइनस म्यू टू और इसका जो पॉइंट एस्टिमेट है दैट इज एक्स वन बार माइनस एक्स टू बार और आपने देखा कि यही क्वांटिटी है जिसके बाद हम कर रहे हैं प्लस माइनस जेड अल्फा बाई टू इन द स्क्वेर रूट ऑफ सम बिग एक्सप्रेशन now that expression 
the square root of s1 square over n1 plus s2 square over n2, this is the standard error or in other words the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of x1 bar minus x2 bar our point estimate. Again repeating myself ke asal mein to sigma 1 square or sigma 2 square hona chahiye lekin agar wo available nahi hai to hum unhe replace kar dete hai by their point estimates. So let us now apply this formula to an example as you now see on the screen the means and variances of the daily incomes in rupees of two samples of workers are given in the following table. The samples being randomly drawn from two different factories. Now the data is for factory A and factory B. The sample sizes are 160 and 220. The mean values are rupees 12.80 and rupees 11.25 and the variances are 64 and 47. Calculate the 90 percent confidence interval for the real difference in the incomes of the workers from the two factories. In order to solve this question the first thing to do is to denote factory A by the subscript 1 and factory B by the subscript 2. Of course, we can reverse this if we want and in that case factory B will be denoted by 1 and factory A by 2. But if we use 1 for A and 2 for B, then we find that x1 bar is equal to 12.80 and x2 bar is equal to 11.25, n1 is 160, n2 is 220 and s1 square is 64 and s2 square is 47. Applying all these values in the formula we obtain the lower limit as 0 0.27 and the upper limit as 2.83. Of course, in this formula we have put z alpha by 2 is equal to 1.645 because we are interested in a 90 percent confidence interval. Students, aap ne dekha ke is waqt hamara jo interval aya hai, uski lower limit hai 0 0.27 aur upper limit hai 2.83. Ab isko hum kis tarah se interpret karenge? Hum ye keh rahe hain ke on the basis of 90 percent confidence we can say that the difference between the incomes of the workers of factory A and the workers of factory B, the mean difference between their wages lies in this range. Yani hum ye keh rahe hain ke ye jo difference hai un dono factories ke workers ki incomes ka on the average this difference lies in this range or ek baat ye bhi note kijiye ke interval hai jaisa maine abhi kaha rupees 0 0.27 to rupees 2.83 to aapka kya khayal hai is this a narrow interval or is it a wide interval as far as interpreting this particular phenomenon is concerned students I would like to encourage you to think about this on your own. Agar aap samajhte hain ke ye narrow karne se ek behtar picture saamne aati, to phir aapko kya karna padta? You would have had to reduce the level of confidence further. Abhi already, um, we are only 90% confident. Aur us pe itna wide, jitna bhi hai, utna wide interval hai. So, agar hum chahte ke isko aur narrow down kare, then we might have had to come down to 80 percent confidence. Lekin jaisa ke mene pehle aapke saath discussion ki, interval ko low karne ki bhi to ek had hogi na. How foolish it might seem if I were to say that the difference between these two quantities 
this difference lies in the range um, 1.11 and 1.31. And I am saying this with 20% confidence. Yani sochye ke interval to itna narrow kar diya, which is good. Lekin mein ye baat sirf 20% confidence ke saath keh rahi hoon, to phir is baat ki significance kya hai? Students, let us apply this very interesting concept to another example. Suppose a study is conducted in a developed country to estimate the difference between middle income shoppers and low income shoppers in terms of the average amount saved on grocery bills per week by using coupons. Random samples of 60 middle income shoppers and 80 low income shoppers are taken and their purchases are monitored for one week. The average amount saved with coupons as well as the sample sizes and sample standard deviations are given in the following table. For the middle income shoppers, we are using the subscript 1 and for the low income shoppers, we use the subscript 2 so that N1 is 60, X1 bar is $5.84 and S1 is $1.41. Similarly, N2 is 80, X2 bar is $2.67 and S2 is $0.54. Now, we wish to use this information in order to construct a 98% confidence interval to estimate the difference between the mean amounts saved with coupons by the middle income shoppers and the low income shoppers. In order to solve this question, the first thing we do is to compute Z alpha by 2 corresponding to level of confidence equal to 98 percent. And if we look at the area table of the standard normal distribution, we find that Z alpha by 2 is equal to 2.33 against this particular level of confidence. Substituting all the available values in the formula, we obtain 5.84 minus 2.67 minus 2.33 into the square root of 1.41 square over 60 plus 0.54 square over 80. 2.72 as the lower limit and 3.62 as the upper limit of our confidence interval. In other words, we are saying that on the basis of 98% confidence, we estimate that the mean difference in the savings of the two categories of shoppers this difference lies somewhere between $2.72 and $3.62. In this situation, mein students, ye baat note that we ke one middle income shoppers ke liye kaha tha aur two low income shoppers. So, if we are saying x1 bar minus x2 bar and our interval is like this, as you have seen, तो इसका मतलब यह हुआ कि on the average middle income shoppers जो हैं वो कुछ ज्यादा रकम सेव कर रहे हैं as compared with the low income shoppers अगर हमारा interval minus something to minus something आता तो फिर हम कहते कि low income shoppers जो हैं वो ज्यादा सेव कर रहे हैं compared with the middle income shoppers देखिए ये तो एक बहुत ही सिंपल सी बात है कि आप किस में से किस को सब्ट्रैक्ट कर रहे हैं और उसके बाद आपका आंसर पॉजिटिव आ रहा है या नेगेटिव आ रहा है उसके मुताबिक ही आप उस सिचुएशन को और उस आंसर को इंटरप्रेट करेंगे ना स्टूडेंट्स इन टुडेस लेक्चर वी हैव डिस्कस्ड इन कंसिडरेबल डिटेल द कांसेप्ट एंड द मेथड ऑफ कंस्ट्रक्टिंग कॉन्फिडेंस इंटरवल्स I discussed with you the confidence intervals for mu and mu1 minus mu2. In the next lecture, we will be talking about confidence intervals for p and p1 minus p2. 
Until next time, best of luck and Allah Hafiz.